The person in charge frowned and asked angrily, You're affecting our progress like this. Aren't you afraid that the other villagers will criticize you? The people from the several families laughed as if they had heard a joke. We don't care about them. What do their lives have to do with us? We can't even survive ourselves. Do we still have the mood to care about others? That's right. Your demolition and relocation this time sounds nice, but you're giving us all kinds of conditions. It does sound good, but you want our hometown. For your own benefit, you don't care if it affects other people's lives, right? Don't think that we're all fools. You businessmen are the most black-hearted. The mayor even said that you were doing a good deed. Who would believe him? The villagers were still watching from the side. When they heard these people speak so heartlessly, they began to curse. What do you mean by not caring about the lives of others? Is this how you do things? Do you still want to continue living in the village in the future? What a bunch of black-hearted fellows. They're all neighbors. No matter how you look at it, they're all related. Look at what you're saying. This is too infuriating. Don't stop me and let me pass. I don't believe that they still dare to beat me up. The scene instantly became chaotic. Yixian frowned and called the village chief over to persuade the villagers to go home. He would settle the rest for them. When the village chief heard this, he immediately walked over. After a lot of persuasion, he finally coaxed those people home. The middle-aged man who spoke earlier gave his relatives a look. Did they see that? The big boss chased the onlookers away. What did this mean? It meant that he was about to start negotiations with them. At that time, he would definitely compromise. Otherwise, why would he chase the others away? Naturally, he was afraid that they would also cause a ruckus if they heard it at the scene. The relatives nodded vigorously. It made perfect sense. The mayor took a few steps forward and looked at the families who were causing trouble. How long are you going to cause trouble? Are you really going to ruin the good things before you're satisfied? The village chief added, Stop while you're ahead. At most, when you choose a house, I'll make the decision to give you priority in choosing a house. Is that all right? The families sneered at them. Priority in choosing a house? What was the use of that? That was not all they wanted. There's no need for you to continue. Also, don't think that you can use force just because you have more people. If you dare to use force, we'll kill you even if we have to risk our lives. Yes, that's what our families mean. Do as you see fit. The few families had already reached a consensus. Among them, the middle-aged man with the hammer was the leader. Yixian was already a little annoyed and gradually lost his patience. He looked at them and said, Then tell me, how do you want to resolve this? The middle-aged man's eyes lit up. He had finally heard this sentence. This is our ancestral home. It's very precious to us. The memories inside are priceless. If you want to demolish it, you have to pay more. Let me tell you the truth. We won't give in unless you pay at least 5 million yuan. When the others saw the middle-aged man mention his price, they also stated their own price. My house is smaller, so I'll ask for less. A total of 4.5 million will do. My house is huge. I need 5 million yuan too. Remember, we're talking about the cost of expropriating the land. You still have to compensate us according to the size of our houses. The village chief, mayor, and the person in charge were all shocked. They looked at these families as if they had seen a ghost. They also looked at the few dilapidated houses behind them. Are you guys crazy? How dare you ask for 5 million yuan for just a few lousy mud houses? Let me ask, with so many families, do your houses occupy a total of 200 square meters? How did you set this price? Is this the price of properties in hell? Do you think this is Shanghai, where every inch of land is worth gold? You really dare to say anything. You're not afraid of others laughing their heads off. The mayor and the others were really angry. They had never seen such an ignorant person. They had given such conditions, yet they still wanted to ask for more. Did they want to go to the moon? Was it big enough? In that case, they would send these people there. These few families could conquer a planet with their thick skin. The more they saw how angry the mayor and the others were, the happier they were. In their opinion, if the village chief and the mayor did not obtain any benefits from this, how could they be so dutiful? They wished they could grow up in their village instead. They must have sacrificed the interests of the villagers in exchange for their own benefits. Why were they angry? 
It was obvious that the big boss would be unhappy if they took his money but didn't produce any results. Humph, it was fine to fool ordinary villagers. However, they were people who were used to the outside world, who didn't know their tricks. In any case, they were just a few families away from starting work. They did not believe that the big boss would be ruthless enough to stop. After all, so many families had signed the agreement. The compensation for violating the agreement was much more than what they were asking for. These families felt that they had everything under control. As long as they persevered, the money would be in their pockets in minutes. This was the power of knowledge. The middle-aged man in the lead said arrogantly, You don't have to care if our houses are broken or not. Anyway, if you don't pay, don't even think about demolishing them. You're worried that if you don't demolish it, it will affect your progress, but we're not afraid. What does this have to do with us? We fear no fall. If you don't believe me, try it. After saying that, he pulled over a small chair beside him and sat down steadily. He seemed as if he had nothing to lose and would go to any lengths. They had heard from the contractors outside that the contractors might lose a lot of money if they started work a day later. If it dragged on for too long, they might not be able to complete the mission on time. At that time, the fine would be a huge sum of money. In any case, these families didn't sign the contract. They had a few families on their side, so they weren't afraid of their houses being forcefully demolished. If someone really died, they would extort these people. They couldn't wait. They had already discussed it last night. They were all villagers, so they were not afraid even if the other party cut off water and electricity. Although Zhenyang village had electricity, the elders were thrifty. They didn't even use 10 kilowatt hours of electricity a month. There was no need to worry about water. Which courtyard did not have a well? They had enough resources to be self-sufficient. In any case, they had already thought of countermeasures for any dirty moves that the other party might use. Unless they received real money, there was no need to talk about anything else. There was no trace of worry on Yi Xian's face. He just calmly watched them being unreasonable. When they were tired of talking, he nodded and said, All right. The eyes of the few families lit up. As expected, they were right to persevere. They easily got a few million yuan. It was simply wonderful. The mayor and the village chief looked at each other and saw the urgency in each other's eyes. They all thought that Yi Xian had compromised. How could something like this have started? Even if Yi Xian compromised, those families who had signed contracts previously would not be willing. At that time, there would still be a commotion. The mayor only felt a buzzing pain in his head. Yi Xian was still too young. It seemed like his mental endurance was not strong enough. Now, there was trouble. Since you don't want to demolish the houses, we won't demolish them. Yi Xian smiled at them and spoke loudly. The families looked at each other. What kind of trick was this? These people did not have such an attitude when they were discussing previously. The middle-aged man gestured for everyone to calm down. He said coldly, You little kid, who are you scaring here? Let me tell you, we won't fall for this. You should put away your tricks as soon as possible. You won't be able to fool us. Yi Xian didn't even look at them and said to the person in charge behind him, Show me the blueprint. When the person in charge heard this, he immediately handed over the blueprint he carried with him. Yi Xian took a quick look. The person in charge also pointed out the locations of these houses. It was similar to what he had imagined and did not affect his plan at all. Have the other villagers signed the contract? Yi Xian asked. The person in charge nodded. Other than these families, all of them have already signed the contracts. The area of their houses has also been calculated clearly. It's all recorded. Yi Xian nodded lightly and handed the blueprint back. He instructed, since that's the case, inform everyone to come and collect the compensation for the demolition tomorrow morning. The location will be at the entrance of the village. We'll distribute everything at the same time. The few families were stunned as they watched Yi Xian and the rest leave. He actually left just like that? He didn't even look at them. Why are they leaving just like that? Are they for real? A young man's eyes were filled with conflict as he looked at the middle-aged man. The middle-aged man frowned and thought for a moment before saying, Don't worry, I can guarantee that they won't dare. They had already taken in so many houses. Did they still need them? The village chief and the mayor walked at the back. When they heard what they said, they began to sneer, their eyes cold. 
You can keep your lousy houses and pass it on to your families. When the time comes, there will only be a few families left in the mountain. You guys will have a lot of fun. The remaining families stayed where they were and began to plan. Just listen to me. We'll persevere until the end. We can't compromise. They won't dare to ignore us. After all, it's a few million. Let's give it a try. That's right. Let's take a gamble and turn a bicycle into a motorcycle. By then, we'll be adults and won't have to suffer the sin of working. The next morning, many armed escort vehicles slowly drove into the village. At this time, there were already some villagers leading their children to stand at the entrance of the village and look out. When they saw the cars arrive one after another, their hearts warmed. The cars gradually approached. The thick body of the cars was very eye-catching. It was made of special metal alloy that could defend against bullets and bombs. After they reached the village entrance, the cars stopped one after another. After the cars stopped, many armed policemen jumped out of the cars and guarded the armored truck in an orderly manner. They were very vigilant as they observed their surroundings. The guns in their hands were obviously loaded. Armed police had the right to shoot anyone who dared to come near the armored truck. When the villagers saw this, they were so frightened that they hid to the side and only dared to watch from afar. The back door of the armed escort car opened, and several bank employees jumped out. As soon as they came out, they revealed the neatly stacked banknotes behind the car. Notes worth 100,000 yuan were bound into small square bundles and stacked together. It looked especially spectacular. Seeing such a spectacular scene, the villagers felt their eyes heat up and their hearts beat much faster. This big boss really kept his word. The village chief had informed them to come to the village entrance and collect their money this morning. A portion of people had yet to arrive, but the armored vehicles had already arrived at the designated location. The village chief and mayor had already brought people over. They had prepared some tables in advance. After discussing with the bank staff, they simply placed the tables in front of the armored truck. This way, it would be easier for them to record and distribute the villagers' compensation more clearly. The mayor was in charge of cooperating with the bank staff to control the situation at the event location. The village chief walked to the other end and shouted at the villagers through the loudspeaker in his hand, Everyone, come to my side and line up. Everyone, be orderly. Don't be noisy and crowd around. When the villagers saw the red banknotes in front of them, no one made a fuss. One by one, they obediently lined up. Even the children obediently shut their mouths and looked in the direction of the armored truck. Yixian also rushed to the village at this time. He looked at the staff who were already prepared and ordered, We'll start distributing the compensation now. Representatives of each family stepped forward and gave their names. Staff members verified the information and money. After verification, the bank staff would pay the compensation according to the allocated amount. The recipient could collect the money and leave after signing or pressing his thumbprint. After the elderly and villagers received the money, they still looked incredulous. It was too unreal to hold such a heavy stack of money in their hands. It felt very illusory, as if they were in a dream. Everyone had different moods after receiving the money, but they were all grateful to Yi Xian. Boss Yi, you're our great benefactor. This is the first time I've touched so much money in my life. With this money, even if I enter the city, my life will be guaranteed. Boss Yi is really a good person. A good person like you will be rewarded. Old Master Zhang, who was still queuing, sighed when he saw this scene. He said earnestly to his grandson, Zhang Zhanghao, Yi Xian is a good person. You have to protect him well. Zhang Zhanghao nodded vigorously. Grandpa, don't worry. I know that the young master is a good person. I will do my best to protect him. On the other side, those families had also come to the village entrance to watch the commotion. Looking at the villagers cheering after receiving the money and the heavy money in their hands, their eyes turned red. They were really envious. If they had signed the agreement obediently before, they would have received the red banknotes now. After their eyes burned, they felt waves of panic in their hearts. Are they serious? If we really can't get the money, it will be a huge loss. That's right. If we can't get the money by then, we won't have any good houses in the city. Looking at the money in their hands, I want it too. Don't tell me they've forgotten about us. Seeing that everyone was already starting to be afraid, 
The middle-aged man seemed as if he expected better from them and said hatefully, Can you guys be more promising? Do you think this little trick can scare you? Let me tell you, they won't give up at this time. They won't dare. We just have to persevere. We will definitely win. Although the middle-aged man spoke confidently, with the stimulation of the red banknotes, some people were already unwilling to listen to him. A few people who wanted to retreat gathered together and found the person in charge of the demolition. They said arrogantly, You guys look quite pitiful. You have to be exposed to the wind and sun every day. How about this? We'll allow you to demolish our houses. The price will be the same as before. However, we also have a request. You have to give us the cash today. Otherwise, we won't agree. The person in charge smiled and asked, What money? The person in charge looked at the few people in front of him mockingly. How could he not understand what they meant? Were they jealous when they saw that everyone had received their money? Unfortunately, it was already too late. The people looked at one another and said naturally, Of course it's the compensation for the demolition. Otherwise, what kind of money could it be? The person in charge chuckled and looked at them. You're not demolishing your houses, so how can you have any money? Chairman Yi has already said that he won't help you with the demolition. You can forget about getting a single cent. Great. Now you can keep your mud houses and carry on the family line. They were stunned on the spot, and their hearts turned cold. Were they really not going to help them with the demolition? Didn't that mean that they wouldn't get a share of the compensation and the houses in the city? If they had known that this was the case, why would they follow the middle-aged man to cause trouble? They had said from the start that it was good to sign the contract. In any case, it was like a huge pie that had fallen from the sky. If there was anyone to blame, it was that middle-aged man. It was all because of him. Since such a huge pie had fallen, why don't they make a big profit out of it? What happened in the end? What did they get in exchange? They had offended the village chief and the mayor. But in the end, it was all for nothing. They were filled with regret. The more they thought about it, the angrier they became. They went straight to the middle-aged man and asked him to compensate them. You bastard, if it weren't for your lousy idea, how could we not have gotten anything? It's all because of you. The middle-aged man was naturally unconvinced. What do you mean by saying that I instigated it? If you weren't greedy, would you believe what I said? Besides, that person in charge might be scaring you. Will he cancel the demolition just because he said so? I don't believe it. How could the rest of them continue listening? As they pushed one another, their anger grew, and they started fighting. The villagers who had received their money stood at the side and watched the commotion as they discussed the matter loudly. There's internal strife just like that? Weren't they quite united previously? Were they united? That's because of their family unity. Now that the money is gone, can they still coexist peacefully? Himph, they're indeed birds of a feather. Now that they can't get anything, they're starting to push the blame on each other. Why don't they talk about their greed? It's quite good. You get the money over there and watch the fighting scenes over here. Life is endlessly happy. With the villagers' cooperation, the compensation was quickly distributed. Looking at the many staff members who had worked hard all day, Yixian waved his hand and announced, Everyone has worked hard today. In order to express my sincerity, I'll treat everyone to a good meal. Everyone immediately cheered. Thank you, Chairman Yi. Long live Chairman Yi. Aya, how embarrassing. Chairman Yi is too polite. From this trip, we obtained a bonus, received some money, and are going to be treated to a meal. Isn't this too good? Yixian got everyone into the car and then brought everyone to the Jinling International Hotel for dinner. Liu Yinran called the Jinling International Hotel in advance. The manager immediately said that he would reserve the largest banquet hall for them. When everyone entered the banquet hall and stepped on the soft carpet, they could not help but sigh. Being rich was too blissful. If not for Chairman Yi, they would never have been able to enter such a high-end banquet hall in their lives. Then, what surprised them the most was what happened next. All kinds of seafood and delicacies were served on the table like flowing water. Yi Xian even generously ordered some Roman? E. Connie worth millions, and he even ordered an entire box. He even said that they would try a few bottles first. If everyone liked them, he would order more. Everyone was stunned by his baller actions. Putting aside the fact that these delicacies were expensive, 
Just the wine alone cost 6 million yuan. Did he have to be such a baller? After drinking a few bottles of wine, they would have drunk several houses worth of money. This could no longer be described as a baller. He was a godly tycoon, a super rich man. One could tell his class based on his spending. However, Yi Xin's spending was too shocking. With the delicacies in front of them, everyone began to eat heartily. They were indeed tired after a long day. Everyone returned satisfied after having good wine and meat. Then, the others left while Yi Xin asked Lu Zonglin to stay. Chairman Yi, do you have any instructions? Lu Zonglin asked. Yi Xin nodded and said, Now that the compensation has been paid, we have to put the housing matter on the agenda. How about this? Go and talk to the president of Tianxian Corporation, Yi Hongliang, about the matter of the villagers' housing. Remember, try your best to plan good lives for the villagers, understand? Lu Zongling quickly said, All right, Chairman Yi, I'll remember everything. Through the demolition matter, Lu Zongling gained an understanding of Yi Xian. He was magnanimous enough and did not care about money at all. However, he would not tolerate villains. His values were extremely upright, and he had a balance in his heart. Lu Zonglin admired Yi Xian even more. Also, I hope that the Jinling branch will deepen their cooperation with the Tianxian Corporation. If there are suitable projects, try your best to contact them. After Yi Xian finished speaking, Lu Zonglin quickly took notes and started to calculate if there was any possibility of collaboration for the current projects in the company. After Yi Xian finished speaking, he also thought that the pressure on his father's side would be reduced a lot. Finally, Yi Xian handed a blueprint to Lu Zonglin. Lu Zonglin took it and opened it. He was stunned. This, this Isa? Lu Zonglin was so excited that he could not even speak properly. Ye Vuan Similet. Yes, this is the distribution map of gold mines. I hope you can be in charge of mining the gold mines in Zhongyang village. Otherwise, why do you think I demolished Zhongyang village? In an instant, Lu Zhonglin, who was initially confused and thought that Yi Xian was really doing charity, was enlightened. He was even more impressed. As expected of Chairman Yi, he was indeed different. Facing such an important mission, Lu Zhonglin was extremely excited. He put away the map of the gold mine with trembling hands and promised Yi Xian solemnly, Chairman Yi, thank you for your trust in me. Don't worry. I will definitely complete the mission you gave me and not disappoint you. Yi Xian did not say much. Handing this mission to Lu Zonglin was the result of his careful consideration. Be it ability or character, Lu Zonglin was the best candidate. After Yi Xian arranged his work and other matters, he instructed Lu Yinran to send him home. In the car, Yi Xian thought about how tired he was when he signed the contracts. I think I still need to forge a seal, muttered Yi Xian to himself. Since he was going to forge a seal, he needed to prepare the materials he liked in advance. Yi Xian did not like materials that followed the trend. He wanted a unique seal. As for the ingredients, Yi Xian had prepared them beforehand. They were the two stones. The two raw stones were both top grade. Any one of them could be used to carve a seal. Thinking of this, Yi Xian asked Lu Yinran to bring him to Villa Number One. Then, he called Zheng Jianghao and asked him to come to Villa Number 1 quickly. Zhang Jianghao did not waste much time and quickly arrived at Villa Number 1. Lu Yinran saw that Yi Xian suddenly changed his mind and thought that he had some plans for the afternoon, so she asked. Yi Xian directly told her that he wanted to make a seal. I do need a seal. Instead of thinking about it all the time, it's better to make it quickly. Lu Yinran nodded. Since her young master said he needed it, it must be necessary. Then. Young master, what material do you want to use to forge the seal? Gold? Lu Yinran thought for a moment and asked. Among the seals she had seen, a gold seal was already very good. It was heavy to the touch and didn't take much strength to stamp it. It was energy-saving and luxurious. A gold seal? As Yi Xin spoke, the image of a gold seal appeared in his mind. He shook his head in disgust. Forget about gold. It's still too tacky. I've already thought about it. Let's use this to forge it. After Yi Xian finished speaking, he pointed at the two raw stones placed in the corner. Seeing these two raw stones, Lu Yinran's thoughts drifted to the scene when she went to the Jinling Peach Garden that day. The most memorable thing that day was that Yi Xian casually gave Lu Yin a few pointers. Then, 
Liu Yun obtained a top-grade violet jade stone. The violet jade had a very beautiful color and was extremely clear. At first glance, Liu Yin Ran liked it very much. If such good material was made into a set of jewelry, it would feel peerless. Young master, can you tell me what kind of jade is inside these two stones? Liu Yin Ran reached out and gently touched the patterns on the raw stones. Unfortunately, there was no feedback. Yi Xin smiled mysteriously at her. He decided to keep her in suspense so as not to scare her. Moreover, there were some things that should only be known when the box was opened. That would be the most pleasant surprise. You'll know when we get to the seal shop. Lu Yin Ran was helpless. She took out her phone and began to search for information about seal shops. Her nimble and slender fingers tapped on the screen a few times. After typing the words seal shop in the search bar, many advertisements immediately appeared. The handling fee and deposit for carving a seal are free. You can pay when you're satisfied with the actual product. Which seal is the strongest in the country? Search for Asyang on Taba. Since ancient times, what are the details of the most classic seals? Please click on the profile picture. Liu Yinran frowned and scrolled down. She felt that most of them were gimmicks. They were even more disgusting than advertisements. Therefore, she simply changed her search method and finally found the best seal shop in Jinling. This seal shop had a very nice name, Jade Seal Pavilion. In order to be safe, Liu Yin ran search for information related to the Jade Seal Pavilion. As expected, she quickly found its official website. The website was very exquisite. It did not look like it was casually copied and pasted. It did look classy. Moreover, this shop had a physical shop in Jinling, which was not far from their location. Liu Yin ran told Yi Xian about the Jade Seal Pavilion. Yi Xian waved his hand and said, since it's the best seal shop in Jinling, let's go and take a look. After Yi Xian finished speaking, he walked out first. Liu Yin Ran quickly followed him while Zheng Jianghao carried the two raw stones and followed behind. The three of them got into the car. As the chauffeur, Liu Yin Ran drove straight to the Jade Seal Pavilion. The Jade Seal Pavilion was not far from the Jinling Peach Garden. It was only a street away. However, because the road in the middle had been repaired for a long time and had not been completed, the road had been sealed. The decorations of the Jade Seal Pavilion were very exquisite. Every part of the room revealed an ancient aura. The entire shop was decorated in a pure Chinese style. Even the outside of the door was decorated with eaves, making the entire shop look like a small courtyard. There were red lanterns hanging on both sides of the door. They seemed to be new and bright red making the place seem full of joy. He strode into the shop. Under the gentle light, the entire shop's aura changed. The floor was paved with exquisite marble. The marble floor looked very bright and natural, probably due to frequent maintenance. The storage shelves in the shop were in the form of treasure vaults. There were many seals of different sizes and shapes on the shelves. At the counter on the right-hand side of the shop stood an old man and a young girl. An old man was standing respectfully beside a girl and reporting carefully. Our performance last month was very good. We reached. He could tell that the little old man was reporting the sales of the shop to the girl. Yi Xin's gaze stopped on the girl for a few seconds and he recognized her immediately. Was this the girl he had met at Lin Antiques, Lin Jishi? What was she doing here? Lin Jishi heard footsteps and looked up to see Yi Xian walking at the front. Mr. Yi, why are you here? Yi Xian smiled faintly and nodded slightly. Is this also your family's business? Lin Jishi smiled and looked at Yi Xian with interest. Oh, why do you say that? Maybe I'm just here to visit and learn. Yi Xian simply rolled his eyes. Was this girl testing him? Firstly, that old shopkeeper is carefully reporting to you. If you weren't the owner, you wouldn't have received such treatment. Secondly, as soon as I came in, I felt that the decorations here were a little familiar. Yi Xian made it sound as if it was very impressive. I've been to a few antique shops, and I've seen a lot of treasure cabinets. However, only Lin Antiques is decorated according to the style of the eight trigrams. The most precious treasures are not placed on high ground, but in the center of the eight trigrams. Miss Lin, am I right? After Yi Xian finished speaking, he looked at Lin Jixi with bright eyes. Lin Jixi was stunned on the spot. This eight- or nine-year-old child actually saw through the unique renovations of Lin Antiques. 
The design of the treasure cabinets was also her grandfather's proud work. She did not expect the little Yixian to see through it. How impressive. It seemed that every time they met, Yixian would give her a huge surprise. Lin Jishi had no choice but to look at Yixian in a new light. She sighed helplessly and spread her hands at Yixian. Mr. Yi, you're really extraordinary. It seems like I have no choice but to admit it. Other than making calligraphy, paintings, and antiques, the Lin family has more businesses and seals. Yixian grinned at her. I'm here to ask you guys to help me make the seal. Lin Jishi nodded gently. Mr. Yi, please wait here for a while. I'll make you some tea. If it were anyone else, Yixian would definitely not be willing to waste time. However, he admired Lin Jishi's tea skills very much, so he followed the host and found a chair to sit down, waiting quietly. Soon, a pot of fragrant top-grade pu'er tea was brought out. Lin Jishi poured a cup for Yixian and Lu Yin ran before asking, Mr. Yi, I wonder if you would like your seal to be carved in relief or made by incision. Furthermore, have you considered what material to use? If the customers who came to the Jade Seal Pavilion to make the seal had not prepared the materials they liked, they could directly buy them from their shop. There were many rare types of jade in the Jade Seal Pavilion. In addition, she was especially good at doing business and coaxing her customers. Naturally, she earned money happily. If Yixian wanted any materials, she could discuss it with her grandfather and let Yixian choose from the few pieces of good materials that she had at home. The last time after Yixian left, her grandfather even lamented that since ancient times, heroes emerged from the young. He had finally seen it for himself. Her grandfather had said that he wanted to build a good relationship with Yixian. However, she didn't expect that they would meet again so soon. Yixian thought about it and said, Relief carving will do. I don't need your materials. With that, he gave Zheng Jianghao a look. The other party immediately walked forward with two raw stones. Lin Jixi looked at Yixian, then folded her skirt and squatted down. She looked at the two large rocks in front of her and frowned. These two raw stones hadn't been opened and looked very ordinary. Could it be that Yixian wanted to use stones as raw materials? Lin Jixi hesitated for a while and decided to tell the truth. She asked, Mr. Yi, are you planning to use these two stones? These raw stones haven't even been opened. What can be inside? There might be stones inside, or it might be filled with cracks. At that time, we won't be able to carve anything, let alone a seal. If not for Lin Jishi's knowledge, she would not have been able to tell that these two stones were raw stones. Even if it was a stone seal, they could not just use any stone. Lin Jishi looked at Yixian worriedly. She subconsciously thought that Yixian did not understand these things and was still thinking about how to tell him tactfully. She suddenly remembered that the last time Yixian bought the Autumn Wind Fan painting from the shop, he did say that he wanted to go to the stone gambling area. Could this be the harvest from that day? It seemed that a person could not be perfect. Yixian was underestimating stone gambling. Yixian was too confident. He didn't even open the stones and just brought them over to say that he wanted to use these stones to carve a seal? Who knew what was inside such a huge stone? Moreover, he didn't even open the stones. Wasn't this the same as opening a blind box? Furthermore, it was a blind box that was chosen purely by guessing. Yixian didn't mind what the others thought. Do you have a master who can open stones here? Lin Jixi nodded. Many of the people who came to carve seals also came over with raw stones that had been opened to test their luck. If the area was larger, they would make a large seal. If it was smaller, they would make a personal seal. It was all up to the heavens. The old shopkeeper of the Jade Seal Pavilion also craned his neck to look from behind, shaking his head vigorously. This young man was too arrogant. He came with two big rocks. The master came in very quickly and was stunned when he saw the two stones in the pure raw stone state. He pointed at the two raw stones. Should I open these two? After the master received confirmation, he asked someone to bring the cutting machine over while he observed one of the raw stones. The shape was quite good, but the surface of the stone seemed to be too thick. He could only cut it open. If there were any spots where light could pass through, he could even polish that spot until it turned green. Zhang Jianghao, Lu Yanran, Lin Jixi, and the little old man were all watching nervously, preparing to see what could be obtained. Meanwhile, Yixian looked calm as he sat on the chair and sipped his fragrant tea comfortably. 
He had to admit that Lin Jishi's tea-making skills were indeed outstanding. As Lin Jishi watched her master find a place to cut, she asked Yi Xian, Mr. Yi, how much did you spend to buy these two raw stones? Yi Xian did not speak. Zhang Zhanghao, who was beside him, replied, he bought it for a million yuan. Previously, he was the one who bought the raw stones with his young master. Thus, he knew the price very well. Lin Jishi was stunned. Her beautiful eyes were filled with disbelief. Did he spend a million yuan on stones that had not been opened? Oh my god, how bold was he? If he was not careful, he would lose all of the one million yuan. No, to be precise, there was a very high chance that he would lose money. Lin Jishi glanced at Yi Xian and saw that he didn't care at all. She seemed to understand something. She remembered that Yi Xian had also bought the painting casually in her shop that day. It seemed that a million yuan was like 100 yuan to a top tycoon like him, right? Could he just buy it and play with it? Thinking of this, even Lin Jishi felt greatly agitated. The world of the rich was too scary. Just as she let her imagination run wild, the cutting machine had already stopped working. The master who opened the stone looked at the stone in his hand and was so excited that his hands were trembling. When everyone saw that their master was silent and was even trembling as if he was about to have a stroke, they anxiously came over. When they saw this, they were also dumbfounded. The inside of the stone was blood red in color and looked extremely transparent. That scene was too shocking. It was as if the bottom of the jade was flowing, giving off a lively beauty. Lu Yinren covered her mouth and exclaimed, What? What is this? Isn't it too beautiful? However, she had never heard of red jade. Was this a piece of blood jade? Didn't this red color gradually appear after it was infected by the blood of the dead? What exactly was this? Lu Yinran walked forward gently and looked at the transparent red color. She was so shocked that she almost lost her voice. This is blood jade. Everyone was already stunned on the spot. They subconsciously spoke, wanting to divert the storm in their hearts. What's blood jade? Isn't this color too beautiful? If I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe that there was actually a natural red jade in the world. My heart is about to stop beating. I'm satisfied to see such exquisite jade in my life. Lu Yinran adjusted her breathing and tried her best to calm down. Blood jade is also a type of jade. The reason why no one has heard of it is because the amount of blood jade is too rare. Most of the mind jade is red jade and yellow jade. There are rumors that red jade is blood jade. This is simply a huge mistake. Lu Yinran began to introduce the blood jade. The real blood jade must be a glass type jade. It's not just that the color of the material is red. Instead, it has to be so red that it seems to be flowing. It also has to be very clear, making it seem like blood wrapped in jade. Only can it be considered a real blood jade. Furthermore, the piece that Yi Xian opened was a rare blood jade. Judging from its size, it was priceless. It could even be said to be worth an astronomical price. Lin Jishi heaved a sigh of relief and continued. This top-grade glass blood jade is so big and perfect. It's worth at least hundreds of millions, or even more than a billion. If they met someone who really knew what was good, it might continue to increase the price. Everyone looked at one another. The entire place was silent. This raw stone that had not even been opened before this actually had a huge price of more than a billion yuan. Damn it, what kind of luck was this? Everyone's eyes followed Yi Xian closely. Was this the son of destiny? Had he actually encountered such a lucky thing? Lin Jishi's beautiful eyes flashed. She said to her master, who was still in a daze, cut the other raw stone. Whether Yi Xian relied on his luck or strength depended on this second raw stone. If they found treasures in both stones, it would definitely mean that Yi Xian was a stone gambling genius. When the master heard the young lady's words, he immediately started his work. Zhang Zhanghao and Lu Yin Ran looked at each other and saw confidence in each other's eyes. They trusted Yi Xian. They clearly remembered that last time. Yi Xian casually gave some pointers and Lu Yin bought a top grade violet. Although it was a little small, it was top notch. Moreover, he had only spent 50,000 yuan. Coupled with the current blood jade, no matter how stupid they were, they understood. Their young master was a person with true strength. To him, stone gambling was like other people playing different games. 
It was easy. The sound of the cutting machine stopped again. His master first closed the stone tightly. After taking a deep breath, he suddenly opened it. Green there was green. In the middle of the stone was an entire piece of green jade. Moreover, one could tell at a glance that this was top-grade glass-type imperial jade. It was extremely clear that it seemed as if water would drip from it. Moreover, there were no cracks in the entire piece. It was flawless. If this was not considered top-grade, they could not find a more perfect jade. It's a top-grade glass-type imperial jade. Such a big piece is worth at least a billion. Lin Jishi could not calm down anymore. Even a money-printing machine could not catch up to the speed of obtaining two top-notch jade in a row. Glass Imperial Jade was the most expensive variety in the jade market. In addition, Yi Xian's piece was simply too perfect. The price would definitely rise. One couldn't even think about obtaining it without a bid of at least one billion. The others were already numb from shock. They looked at the top-grade glass type Imperial Jade in a daze inside. It's too terrifying. He obtained a glass type Imperial Jade after obtaining a piece of blood jade. Even a top-grade jade auction isn't so exciting. These two jade stones are too beautiful. I finally understand why many people favor good jade ornaments. Two stones will cost two billion. I feel like my original values are about to shatter. Everyone was talking at once when they saw Yi Xin finally put down his teacup and walk towards the two jade stones. He measured the size of the jade with his hand, then picked up a marker pin at the side and drew circles on the jade. He muttered to himself, help me carve out a few sets of large seals here. The rest of the jade will be made into rings, necklaces, and so on. When Lin Jishi heard Yixin's words, she felt her blood rush up and her vision almost went black. If not for her normal blood pressure, she would have exploded on the spot. Her heart ached too much. Was he going to use these two pieces of top ray jade as seals? Wasn't this too extravagant? Furthermore, couldn't rings and necklaces be made with scraps? Why did he have to destroy the integrity of the raw stones? Lin Jishi could not hold it in anymore. She simply said, Mr. Yi, these two stones of yours are priceless. If you use them to make seals this this, it was too wasteful. Why don't you auction it or keep it in your collection? Lin Jishi added. Yi Xian nodded lightly and echoed. What Miss Lin said makes sense. Auctioning or collecting it are indeed good options, but what should I use to forge the seal? He first affirmed Lin Jishi's words before replying her question with a question. Lin Jishi was speechless. He was a baller. He had the final say, all right? Lin Jishi was very helpless. It was as if her entire heart was bleeding. Such perfect jade pieces of jade were used up just like that. What a waste of natural resources. She couldn't bear to watch this. All right. Mr. Yi is really generous. What patterns do you plan to carve on it? How many sides would you like? Lin Jishi tried her best to regain her position as a merchant and discuss the details with Yi Xian. Yi Xian was more lenient with these requirements and said, These seals can be carved into dragons, tigers, chelants, and other auspicious beasts. Next, I'll have one seal that is carved in relief and another seal that is made by incision. You can arrange the rest as you see fit. As for the sculptor, Yi Xian didn't make any requests. After all, he had taken out such top-grade materials. For the sake of his reputation, it was impossible for the other party to find a new bee. If they really accidentally ruined something, they wouldn't be able to afford it even if they sold all their shops. Lin Jishi nodded. I'll go find the best master now. It should be completed in a few days. Yi Xian naturally agreed and asked casually, I'll give you a deposit in advance. It would cost a lot to have a good master sculptor to make a move. Lin Jishi waved her hand repeatedly. There's no need. It's our honor to be able to make a seal. I'll personally supervise the work. I'll contact you to send it to you when it's done. Seals that were made of such good raw materials could be considered an excellent promotion for the Jade Seal Pavilion. How could she accept more money? After Yi Xian thanked them softly, he left with the other two. Then, Yi Xian returned home. It was already dark. Yi Xian looked at his sisters at home but didn't see his parents. He was stunned. Where are mom and dad? They went out for business, said Yuan. I heard from mom and dad that it seems to be a call from the Jinling branch of the Dinglong Corporation. 
It seems that they have a project to discuss with Tianxin Corporation. I think mom and dad won't be back too late today. Yuan thought about how her parents were in a hurry when they went out and the smile on their faces that they couldn't stop. She also smiled. Looks like something good has happened. Meanwhile, Yixian also understood. He didn't expect Lu Zonglin to act so quickly and directly make a move now. Just as Yixian was thinking about this, his phone rang. It was a video call. The other party's profile picture was a beautiful figure in a long dress standing in the sunflower garden. The breeze blew her dress slightly, making her look like a fairy. Yixian took a look and waved his cell phone. Six sisters calling. This sixth sister was Yixian's sixth sister, Yiming. She was a well-known actress. At the age of 20, she received the title of Best Actress. The previous movie, Summer and Cicadas, earned 5 billion yuan at the box office. She was considered top-notch in China. Previously, she had filmed a movie overseas. He picked up the phone. A beautiful face appeared on the screen. She was delicate and beautiful, and her skin was fair. There were very few such beauties even in Jiangnan, let alone in North China. The person on the screen was wearing a green brocade. The color was very bright, but under her light, no matter how brilliant the brocade was, it looked dim and colorless. This was Yi Xian's sixth sister. Sixth sister, have you returned to China? Are you going back to Jinling? I've returned to China, but I'll be staying in Shanghai for the next few days. Haven't you been on vacation recently? How is it? Do you want to come to Shanghai to play with your sixth sister? As Yi Ming spoke, a pleasant voice sounded. It made them feel refreshed. Then, a few of his older sisters also came over. Ming Ming, that's not right. You just returned to the country, and you want to snatch our little brother away from us? His big sister Yuan looked at Yi Ming on the screen and pretended to be angry. Big sister, why don't you come over too? You really know how to talk. Don't we need to work? Yi Van simulet helplessly. Then, everyone chatted for a while. Yi Xian thought about it and decided that it was time to make a trip to Shanghai. After all, he had signed in for many things in Shanghai. It was good to take a look. After deciding on this plan, Yi Xian went upstairs. Then, the sisters below started to play rock, paper, scissors. Finally, it was rare for his third sister to win, so she happily went to retrieve the sleeping pillow for tonight. Yi Xian was speechless. Could it be that he had completely become a sleeping tool now? At night, he felt that it was very elastic. Yi Xian thought, sigh, it smells so good. In the next few days, Yi Xian spent his time waiting calmly. He was waiting for the seals and also waiting to arrange the matters in Jinling before setting off for Shanghai. Over the past few days, the family had been happy and harmonious. When his parents returned, they simply announced that the Tianxian Corporation and the Jinling branch of the Dinglong Corporation intended to engage in an in-death cooperation. Meanwhile, Lu Haikong was waiting anxiously for something in his villa. He paced back and forth in the living room. He frowned and muttered to himself, Why is it so slow? Nothing must go wrong on the way. Lu Yun lay on the sofa. He was a little dizzy from watching his father walk back and forth. He could not help but complain. My father, are you farming steps on the spot? Those who know might think that you're anxious. However, those who don't know might think that our house is too small and that we're living in a coop. Instead of walking in such a huge courtyard, he chose to walk in circles. Sigh. It reminded him of some animals that he did not dare to mention in front of his father. His father was like a donkey that was pulling a millstone in circles. When Lu Haikong heard his son's words, he immediately glared at him and reprimanded, You're really a brat for nothing. It's fine if you don't know how to solve the family's worries, but you're actually causing trouble for your father every day. Why? Are you planning to anger me to death and inherit the family business early? Just as the two of them were talking, the doorbell rang. Lu Haikong and Lu Yun rushed towards the door like two arrows leaving the bow. The two of them moved so quickly that the man outside the door was shocked. He could not help but frown. He leaned slightly to the left and used his body to protect the box in his hand. It seemed like there was something valuable inside. The box was covered in a layer of crocodile skin. There seemed to be something cushioned inside. The box looked as if it was bulging and should be able to prevent collisions. The two of you, be careful please. The man reminded them politely 
and carefully carried the box inside. Lu Haikong and Lu Yun nodded repeatedly. The two of them walked on both sides of the man and asked in unison, How is it? Is it done? The man nodded slightly and glanced at the box in his hand. Lu Haikong was very excited and immediately wanted to take the box from the man. Unfortunately, before he could approach, the man gently raised his hand and stopped her. I'm sorry, Chairman Liu. There are rules in this industry. Let's go in. The man could not hand over the item by hand. Otherwise, any mistake would be a huge loss for both sides. The three of them walked straight into the villa. The man carefully placed the box on the coffee table and gently opened it. Inside the box was a wooden box made of red sandalwood. Lu Yun could not help but roll his eyes. Had he held his breath and focused for a long time just to be shown the wooden box? Was this the matryoshka doll method? Then, the man opened the wooden box. On the golden velvet cloth was an exquisite purple seal. A coiling dragon sat at the head of the seal, looking exquisite and imposing. It was the small seal made of violet jade that Lu Haikong prepared for Yixian. The man raised his hand at Lu Haikong, indicating that he could inspect the goods. Lu Haikong carefully picked up the seal and appraised it with Lu Yun. The top grade violet jade was cold to the touch and had a moist texture, making one's heart calm down. During the carving process, the sculptor must have studied the jade carefully and analyzed it after receiving the jade. Only then did he choose the best cutting position. The entire seal was transparent in color, and the purple color made it look even more noble. The sculptor complied with Lu Haikong's request and only carved a coiling dragon on the head of the seal. The reason why Lu Haikong did not choose to carve the seal on all sides was because he felt that the quality of the top grade violet jade was too high. If there were too many carvings, it would cover up the beauty of the jade instead. In order to highlight the quality of the jade, Lu Haikong boldly chose the simplest carving method. Initially, he was a little nervous, but after seeing the real thing, he felt that the choice he made was really great. Lu Yun's focus was different from his father's. His gaze was tightly locked on Coiling Dragon. It had to be said that this master sculptor's skills were extremely good. The seal was not big, but when he carved it, it was extremely exquisite. Even the scales on the dragon's body were clear, as if it was about to come to life. Looking at the dragon eye that was represented with only one, Lu Yun even wondered if the dragon would also soar into the sky if he gave it pupils. This carving was superb. Be it aura or details, they were impeccable. Good, good, good. Lu Haikong said, good, three times in a row, representing his excitement and satisfaction with this seal. Lu Haikong was overjoyed. This time, Chairman Yi should be more satisfied. When the man saw that Lu Haikong was so satisfied, he felt relieved. After all, Lu Haikong was a big boss in Jinling. Such a person was not someone they could offend. This box is for you. It can be considered a set with the seal. After the man received the rest of the money, he left the Lu family villa with the outermost box. Lu Haikong played with it for a while, more before carefully placing the seal in the box. He thought about it and called Yi Xin personally. Yi Xin picked up quickly. What's wrong, Chairman Lu? When Lu Haikong heard Yi Xin call out his name, he looked very happy and laughed out loud. I saw that the weather today is good and wanted to ask if Chairman Yi has time to have tea with me. Yi Xin looked at the weather outside the window. Although the sky was not clear, it was refreshing to travel in this weather. Sure, where can we meet? Yi Xin agreed readily. Lu Haikong quickly gave him an address. It was a small tea house outside the city. The two of them hung up the phone. Lu Haikong shouted at Lu Yun, who was about to change his clothes, change your clothes and bring my new good tea leaves to my study. Meanwhile, Yi Xian also called Lu Yinran and asked her to send him over. Lu Yinran quickly arrived outside the villa. Just as Yi Xian got into the car and was about to leave, his cell phone rang again. Yi Xian picked it up and realized that it was Lin Jixi. Mr. Yi, your seals have been completed. Where do you think I should send it to you? Yi Xian thought about it and told her the address of the small tea house. I'll be drinking tea there today. Send it over. After Lin Jixi memorized the address, she went to arrange the delivery. The road to the small tea house was very smooth. Before long, they arrived at the address. There were no tall buildings that were common in the city. Instead, there was a quiet purple bamboo forest. 
The two of them parked the car in the parking lot outside and walked into the jade forest. The quiet path was paved with cobblestones, and the scenery was beautiful. Occasionally, a breeze would blow past, and the bamboo leaves would let out a light slapping sound, as if they were massaging one's eardrums and refreshing one's mind. This was also Lu Yinron's first time here. She couldn't help but praise, this tea house is really not bad. This environment is amazing. It was no wonder that the tea house was built outside the city. If it was really in the city where every inch of land was worth gold, no one would be willing to waste a large piece of land to build such a purple bamboo forest. After walking for a few minutes, they arrived in front of a wooden house. There was a plaque hanging above the door of the wooden house that said, Green Bamboo Tea House. The wooden house was not big. More than ten small tea tables were neatly arranged there. It was clean and spotless. Seeing the two of them enter, the young lady in the Hanfu one at the door smiled at them and asked, Welcome, do you have an appointment, or? I think so. It's under Mr. Lu. Yi Xian thought for a moment and replied. Lu Haikong had asked him to drink tea here. He must have reserved a seat in advance. The young lady in the Hanfu quickly glanced at the reservation form on the table and simply said, So the two of you are Chairman Lu's guests. Please follow me. After saying that, the young lady in the Hanfu led the way. It was only when she walked out that the two of them saw that she wore many accessories on the outside of her Hanfu. When she walked, the accessories jingled. It was extremely pleasant to the ear. The three of them passed through the building, and the outside suddenly became clear. There were a few flower beds planted in a large purple bamboo forest. The flowers were in full bloom, emitting an alluring fragrance. When mixed with the fragrance of the tea, it formed a special fragrance that was unforgettable. A few shacks were built on the thatch. They looked primitive and interesting. There were many guests here. They looked like very cultured people. They spoke softly and did not affect others. Under a thatched hut, Lu Haikong and Lu Yun were sitting in their seats and talking softly. When they saw Yi Xian and Lu Yun walking over, they hurriedly stood up to welcome them. Chairman Yi, you're finally here. Please take a seat. Lu Haikong laughed and invited the two of them to sit. Lu Yin Ran observed the environment of the tea house and said with a smile, I didn't expect that Chairman Lu was a quiet and elegant person, to the extent that you were able to find such a good place. Lu Haikong raised his eyebrows and said, Of course. After all, I'm drinking tea with Chairman Yi. Just thinking about what's classy enough makes my hair fall off. As he spoke, a hint of smugness flashed across Lu Haikong's eyes. He had only been invited here by his friends once in a while. After that, he had become obsessed with this place. This small environment was awesome. At this moment, Lu Yin also interrupted and said, Brother Yi. We were supposed to welcome you at the door just now, but guess what the greeter said? At this point, Lu Yun imitated a woman's voice. The two of you can wait in your seats in peace. If the two of you stay here all the time, the other guests will think that we've changed our greeters. Greeters? Looking at Lu Haikong and Lu Yun's high-end clothes, Yi Xian and Lu Yin Ran laughed out loud. That young lady in the Han Fu was quite interesting. She was a mysterious person. At this moment, the attendant served them fragrant tea. Yi Xian casually looked around and realized that the attendant was also wearing the Hanfu, but compared to the receptionist, the sleeves were shorter. However, this made it easier to work. She looked like a capable little chef. Picking up the teacup, Yi Xian couldn't help but raise his eyebrows. Not only did this shop know how to decorate, but even the tools they used were top-notch purple sand teacups. The fragrance of the green tea kept entering his nose. The tea was clear and smooth in his mouth, and it tasted delicious. Yi Xian's eyes lit up and he narrowed his eyes as he tasted the tea comfortably. The environment was good and the taste was good. This was life. Ha ha ha, I'll beat you to death, bye you bye. Suddenly, a child's cry woke everyone up from their revelry. The few of them frowned and looked over. At some point, a woman with a young child sat near them. The loud cry just now was from the child. At this moment, he had already climbed onto the table and jumped hard, accompanied by his laughter. Not only were Yi Xian and the others unhappy, but the other guests also looked over with a hint of impatience on their faces. Everyone came here to enjoy the peace and quiet. 
What was the meaning of bringing a child here to cause trouble? However, no matter how their eyes widened, the woman did not seem to feel anything. She sat on the chair and swiped her cell phone, laughing from time to time. After all, it was a child. It was impossible for the guests to really feel bad about a child. Everyone thought that when the child was tired of playing, he might stop. However, things didn't go as planned. This child seemed to be on steroids and looked especially excited. He was tired of jumping on the table. Then, he began to run back and forth in a few shacks. It would have been fine if he was just running, but as he ran, it was accompanied by wanton shouting. Ga ga ga. I'm a little duck that can run and jump. Pa, pa, pa. I'll kill you. I've already fired. Everyone at the location has been wiped out. Motion Superman, transform. I'm going to shoot motion light waves at your location now. Top, 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 top. How was this a child? He was simply a troublemaker. He was spouting all kinds of onomatopoeia, words like a ventriloquist. Who could stand this? Finally, a customer became impatient and reached out to summon the service staff. Go and give your opinion to the child's mother. This is not their family's amusement park. What does this look like? The attendant nodded when she heard this. Just as she was about to step forward, the child actually dragged a table without customers and kept shaking it. The tea set on the table was placed on the right side. After the table was shaken, it fell to the ground and shattered into purple sand shards. Not only did the child not look flustered at all, but he even clapped his hands and laughed. The attendant was also so angry that her head hurt. Such a child was really annoying. She walked straight to the woman and said, Madam, can you take care of your child? He has already caused a bad influence on the guests beside him. When the woman heard the attendant's words, she looked up. Her face was pale, as if she had put on too much makeup. When the guests heard the attendant's words, they echoed. Children at this age should be disciplined well. Otherwise, when they grow up, they will be ill-bred. Who comes to a tea house to make noise? This is a public area, not someone's amusement park. As a mother, can't you control your child when he's making a fuss? It affects the moods of others too much. At this moment, the woman also noticed the complaints of the customers beside her. She stood up and sneered at the customers. Why? If you can drink tea, can I? Didn't you all spend money to come in to drink tea? You can just drink your own tea. Why are you meddling in other people's business? You're really salty and worry about nothing. The other guests were simply dumbfounded. They had seen shameless people, but they had never seen someone so shameless. Did she think that she was so great because she spent some money on tea? What was wrong? Did she think that she was Lu Yuan? Did she buy this tea house with a cup of tea? Before the guests could react, the woman had already seen the purple sand shards on the ground. She looked at the attendant and said in a very disdainful tone, I was wondering why your attendant looked like she had eaten gunpowder. So it was my child who hit your tea set, right? Why? Are you afraid that I don't have the money to compensate? As the woman spoke loudly, she took out 200 yuan from her bag and threw it hard. Seeing the money fall to the ground lightly, the woman said arrogantly, I'll compensate you now. 200 yuan should be enough, right? After saying that, as if she was not appeased, she added arrogantly, What you should do now is to quickly clean up the broken tea set. If you scratch my baby, you won't be able to bear the consequences. When the guests saw the woman like this, they were instantly furious. Could this be considered a human? Her child was causing trouble, but she couldn't let anyone talk about it. She didn't hand over the compensation properly. Instead, she just had to throw it in the attendant's face. Wasn't the attendant human? Had she sold herself to be this woman's slave? F asterisk CK. If such a person wasn't scolded to wake her up, she would continue to act crazy. Woman, what kind of attitude is this? Who are you being so arrogant for? Where's the boss of your tea house? Hurry up and chase this woman out. That's right, chase her out. Don't accept a single cent less for the tea and compensation. What the hell is this? It's really disgusting. This woman is too arrogant and especially disrespectful. Do you really think you're so great just because you have a little money? If you have the ability, don't go out. Make a place to drink tea at home. When the woman heard the customer's angry voices, she did not take it to heart at all. 
The corners of her lips curled up slightly as she looked at her freshly done nails calmly. When the guests stopped talking, she began to retort, You're a group of country bumpkins who have never seen the world. Do you think such a dilapidated place is a precious land? All of you only know how to drink tea here. If you have the ability, go out and do something big.